I'll see you later. Um, it is known as sleeping beauty syndrome, but those who have the brain disorder Klein-Levin syndrome say it's closer to a living nightmare. Often it develops in teenagers and can last for more than a decade, sending sufferers to sleep for hours on end, and then when they wake up, they're in a bit of a childlike state. We'll speak to Beth Goodyear, who has the disorder in a moment. Morning to you. Uh, first, though, Diane Oxbury explains how it affects Beth's life. 20-year-old Beth Goodyear is literally one in a million. She has the extremely rare Klein-Levin syndrome, which, when it strikes, causes her to sleep for up to 22 hours a day for weeks at a time. This is my bed. Um, I recently got it and it's got a few mattresses on it to make it comfortable because I spend most of my time in my bed, unfortunately. I'm an active person, but this is where I spend half of my life. Klein-Levin syndrome, or KLS for short, affects fewer than 100 people in Britain. It's a neurological illness. No one knows what causes it, and there is no known cure. Because it typically starts in adolescence, it's been dubbed sleeping beauty syndrome. Are you being shy? Yeah, you OK? For the few hours when Beth is awake, she appears childlike and confused, and she's unable to tell what's real and what's a dream. Beth's entirely dependent on her mum, Janine, who's had to give up work to care for her. You read about it and you hear about the altered state and the confusion and the tiredness and the childlikeness and you read about it, but it, it, you can't comprehend it till you witness it. And Beth and Janine are with us here now. Good morning. Good morning, it's a Good morning both. Very strange condition you have, but also it's, it's terribly difficult because your life is in effect on hold, isn't it, really? Definitely, um, because the onset of the illness for most people is adolescent. It's the age where you're like, starting to do things with your life, like um, college, university jobs, um, basically finding out who you are. Mm. Um, um, and so it takes all that away from you, and it's that time when it's kind of crucial. Mm. And we saw pictures of you there when you were sort of going through an episode, as it were. Once, when you're going afterwards, do you remember any of it or not really? Um, I remember snippets, but mostly no, which is really hard because then it's literally like half of your life just disappeared. Yeah. When an episode starts, or a series of episodes starts, Janine, you basically have to be ready to help her. Yeah, she needs 24-hour care, like you saw. She becomes very childlike. Um, I'm very confused. She has something called derealisation, which means she can't work out um, what's, what's real and what's not. She'll often say, I'm a dreaming or I'm a dead. Um, mm. So she needs 24-hour care all the time. Mm. And the episodes can go on for what, what length of time? Usually, on average, for Beth, uh, between one and three weeks now. So she's sleeping pretty much 22 hours a day for those three weeks? Beth, she, the longest she slept is 22 hours, um, but she, in average she sleeps 17 to 18 hours in the day, yeah. Beth, do doctors have any idea what causes it? Um, they know it's like what part of the brain causes it, which is the thalamus, um, but they don't actually know why, so then there's no medication for it or anything because they don't know what causes it, so they don't know how to fix it. Mm. It's often triggered by an infection in a lot of people mm. that precedes the, the start, usually. And when it first started, I mean, you wouldn't have known what it was. So how or, did you think she was just being like a, a sort of pretty, I don't know, kind of extreme version of a teenager, for example, that you're sleeping a lot? Um, for a very short time, what happened is she had a tonsillitis. Yeah. And then she went back to college, got better, went back to college. And after that, she was coming home from college uh, just totally tired all the time, needing to go to bed. And then one day, about two weeks after this, she fell asleep on the sofa. And when I went to wake her, yeah. she I couldn't wake her. And when I eventually stirred her, um, she was babbling nonsense and hallucinating. And it was then well, that I knew something. For you. It was very frightening at that time. How long are the gaps between the episodes? Um, well, for each person, it differs. People can go for months without episodes, but for me, the longest since I got um, KLS in 2010, the longest gap I've had is about five weeks. Five weeks. So you can't really then go back to your studies or, or, or 
pick up on anything? No, I've, had, I've tried to restart college four times, but each time I've had to drop out because I'm just missing too much work and mm. it's just impossible to keep up with it. Um, mm. Can you talk to other people who have the syndrome? Does that help? It really helps. There's groups on like Facebook and stuff and mm. it's been such a big help to like... And there's a charity called KLS Support UK mm. and they organise um, a conference each year and do a lot of work. Um. But I suppose in, in a way the difficulty is because not not that many people get it there isn't is, is there much research done into it no no. <laughs> no basically they do try the stanford university in the states is the only place that i know of that are currently researching um and then and i know some doctors over here sometimes ask for funding for the research mm -hmm. but it's really hard to get um and what the chances are that uh, from what they've seen it will eventually go away hopefully normally it lasts for about um, 10 to 15 years. Which is a long time in your lifetime, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, considering like I got it when I was nearly 17, so... How do your friends react? Um, most of them are like really supportive. I've had a couple who like have not been that great, but lot, most of them are like really, really supportive. And for, for a short period of time, I was kind of a novelty and oh, like, oh, my friend slept for <laughs> six months kind of thing, but... yeah. They're really nice and supportive, yeah. and they really And they must miss sound. you when you're having an episode, then. Yeah, but like we make up for it well. Oh. Well. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming and telling us all Thank about you. it. And uh, we want to wish you all the very best. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, viewers in the northwest can see more on this tonight on Inside Out on BBC One at 7:30. In other parts of the country, you will of course be able to catch up with it on iPlay.